Hey, and welcome back to the channel where Cordy and I are building a one of a kind, massive self-contained snowblower to put on this four wheel drive military truck. Let's head inside and check out the progress. In the last episode, you saw us get this engine mounted and get it fired up for the first time. And hearing this engine run for the first time gave me the motivation that I needed. And now I am so excited to see this thing blowing snow for the first time. Yesterday in town, we picked up a highly anticipated box that I've been waiting for. This thing is so heavy, but it looks great. And today's project is to work on getting these pulleys mounted up and see if my drive idea is going to work. This is the PTO input. This is where the PTO shaft would have come from the tractor that this blower is intended to go on to power the blower. But instead, this is where our 12 inch diameter drive pulley is gonna go. We machined this adapter based on some drawings that were on the website where the pulley came from. Let's see if it's gonna fit. That's the idea anyways. Now that we know that the pulley is gonna work on the PTO side, it's time to get the pulley mounted on the engine side. So we're gonna use this four inch diameter pulley. It goes right here. And step one is to make an adapter shaft that goes from this crank bushing right here into this pulley. Well, it turns out that little lathe can do a good job on parts like this, and it fits this crank pilot perfectly. So I think this is gonna work to help align our new pulley with the crank of the engine. I think that the best route for me to ensure that this whole thing is solid and can transmit the torque is gonna to be to TIG weld this pulley onto this plate. It's been over two years since I've picked up a TIG torch and I honestly have not done very much TIG welding, so let's see how this goes. Ha <laughs> ha, it looks like a weld. I'm pumped right now because like that actually looks like what it's supposed to look like. One set of pulleys down, one to go. So now in theory, these parts should make the blower spin. And I think it's finally time to fully assemble them. I wasn't filming when I took these two pieces apart from each other, but it took me a long time to figure out how to get them apart. I've never seen a coupling like this and it's, it's really cool. There's a groove in this and a groove in this. Once they're together, we slide these little ball bearings through this hole and they ride in that groove and lock the whole thing together. So now we're adding these bolts as shear bolts. If something locks up inside the blower, this bolt will break and allow this to rotate freely. And then all we have to do is replace these bolts rather than replacing a much more expensive part. I honestly can't believe this worked. We have a pulley mounted on the PTO input shaft and we used that. 
to make it happen. <laughs> and we're now one huge step closer to having that engine power that snowblower. Is that the official technique? <laughs> now the real question is, are the pulleys lined up with each other? Riley Casey. They are literally perfect. It's a new year and we've got some big things coming for the channel. Factor's here to help us achieve those goals by saving us time and energy with meals delivered straight to our door. With 34 chef prepared and dietitian approved options, there's always something new to try. Plus I can round out the meals and get my snack on with their assortment of quick bites, juices, smoothies, and more. A warm hearty meal, especially in the middle of winter, keeps me fueled for whatever the day might throw at me. It's like meal prepping without actually having to dedicate the time to prepping. I simply choose my meal and enjoy fresh flavor packed food in less than two minutes. Factor is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. So if you've got big plans for 2023, head to factor75.com or click on the link in the description below. And make sure to use the code AMBITION60 to get 60% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com with the code AMBITION60 for 60% off. And thanks again to Factor for fueling my crazy ideas. It is an absolutely beautiful day and we could not work in the shop any longer. So we're gonna try to get some more firewood split. We kind of underestimated how much firewood we were gonna need this winter. It's been a lot colder than expected and we need some more firewood. Throughout the excavation process and building our building, we have about 40 logs piled up that are gonna make good firewood. So when we need more firewood, we can just pull from those logs. And this is reason 102 why we need a bigger shop. Digging out our equipment because it's buried in the snow. But now the question is, will it start? <laughs> if family's in town they get put to work. I'm gonna be in the excavator, Bradley's gonna be on the chainsaw, my brother's gonna run the splitter, and then my mom is gonna stack the wood. And we'll see uh, how many of these logs we can get done before the sun goes down. One of the next things to figure out on this is that we need a way to start this engine when it's not under load. So instead my plan is to loosely fit belts on this so that this pulley can slip on the belts and then use this idler pulley here that we can move in order to tension the belts up. So when we tension the belts up, that'll engage the blower and the blower will start spinning. But I don't want to have to manually engage and disengage this because that means I'll have to get out of the army truck. So the plan is to have this actuator move this pulley in and out to engage and disengage the belts. But it's really critical that all these dimensions be perfect, so we're gonna head to the computer. What I'm working on now is coming up with the geometry so that as we engage and disengage that linear actuator, it tightens and loosens the belt.
When I don't have the right size washers, I just move them. I think it's finally time to tack this boy in place. Ready? Yep. Forgot to turn the welder on. In this position, the belt will be loose, and then now we're gonna see what happens as we use the linear actuator to tighten the belt. And then that's the fully extended position. Aside from buying a belt, I think we can go ahead and cross this one off the list. But before we give this thing a whirl, I think we better get things a little more set up. First step, I think it's time to address the fuel situation. Because I don't think that this is gonna work. This is a tank out of a 1996 S10 Blazer. So it uses the same style GM fuel pump that the Sunfire used, but it's a lot more of a convenient shape and it holds a little more fuel. All right, with the gas tank done, it's time to move on to mounting the radiator. I might have gotten a little carried away on this radiator mount, but I think it's gonna work pretty well. This is really similar to the way it mounted from the factory. These posts right here in the radiator tank are gonna slip into these holes. And then I'm using rubber hose washers to give it a little rubber layer to add some cushion and isolate the vibration a little bit. The lower radiator mount is done now and it's time to figure out a way to secure the top of the radiator to keep it from wiggling back and forth and also to clamp it down. We had a few questions in the last video about why we're using belts and not a chain drive. And the answer is that I wanted the belts because they are able to slip. So if something catastrophic were to happen, I want the belts to slip where a chain has no give. But hopefully nothing catastrophic happens. So I used an online belt calculator to figure out roughly what length belt we need and then went to town. Unfortunately, they didn't have the right kind of belts. We're using 5 8 belts for this. They only had half inch belts but it's gonna let us figure out exactly what length belt we need, test this thing out, and we'll get the right kind of belt ordered. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Longer, uh, definitely longer. That's not even. That's not even kind of right. Strike one. Yeah, no, that's not right either. We're gonna need a longer belt. I guess that means we're headed back to the store because we are way too excited to not try to run this thing today. Okay. We got options. Is it nothing? Maybe. Got that one. Maybe we're lucky. Maybe these are the right ones. What do you think, Boone? Are they gonna fit? Oh, hey, this one. You like belts? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
No! <laughs> Maybe if the belt doesn't fit, we will give it to Boone. But I'm hoping it fits. Okay, here we go. So this one is also the right type of belt material. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Too big. It's very, very loose. <laughs> way, way loose. Definitely gonna need a tighter belt than that. According to what I just measured, we need a 68 inch belt. However, I know that the belt doesn't ride all the way in the very bottom of the grooves, which is what I just measured. So it's gonna need to be a little bit longer than that, like 69 or 70. Back to the store. Wish me luck. If all goes as planned in the next hour or so, today is the day that we're actually gonna test the drive feature on this blower. You guys, this is either gonna go really, really well, not at all, or really, really poorly. That pretty much covers all the options. I ended up going to all of the auto parts stores in town last night and basically bought every belt I could find that was within the right <laughs> scope. This is a 71 inch, half inch belt. We want 5 eighths belts and they only had one. Hopefully just the one belt will be enough to test it and then I'm gonna order the actual belts that I want. Right now it's completely loose and I'm able to actually spin this freely, which is good because that's how we're gonna start the engine. Now we're gonna see what happens when we tension it. I think that's pretty much perfect. Now with this done, that means that we can make this engine power the snowblower and test it out for the first time. I'm gonna go get gas. Are you excited or nervous? I think I'm 80% nervous, 20% excited. What? Flip those odds around. <laughs> we haven't run the engine since you guys saw it run for the first time, so step one, we're just gonna make sure that the engine still runs and that we can turn it off. It's got coolant, we got the fuel all hooked up how it's supposed to be now. Courtney's got her fire extinguisher, and I think it's time to start it again. All right, here we go. It's running! I made that pulley, and it doesn't even really weevil wobble that much. All right, so can I rev it? Sounds like one of those cool kid high school cars. Right here. Come on. Okay. Here we go. That went really smoothly. Like that worked how it's supposed to work. I think sometimes it might come across like I'm doubting Riley. It's not that I'm doubting Riley, it's just I'm doubting the process. Like there's so many things that could have gone wrong. It has been a lot of work to get to this step. Some long days, a lot of unique problem solving and all of that without really knowing if it was gonna work at all. And I think it's gonna work. So now I'm even more motivated to get the rest of it wrapped up and get this thing mounted on the army truck so we can see it throw some snow. 
Stay tuned guys for the next episode where hopefully we are wrapping everything up on this blower and getting it mounted on the army truck. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.